Hey guys, welcome to Let's Talk Algorithms. This is Vengtesh and today we'll be solving the problem Kth largest element in an array. Let's start with the problem description. Find the Kth largest element in an unsorted array. Note that it is the Kth largest element in a sorted order, not the Kth distinct element. Alright, um, so it's pretty straightforward. Given an array which is not necessarily sorted and given a value k, we have to return the largest, I mean the kth largest number. So, as you can guys can see, this is the start with the workbook to gauge what the question is asking for. So this is an array and k is equal to two. So the question explains basically, basically the value is uh, kth largest in the sorted form. So let's sort this array. It's basically one, two, three, four, five, six. And now uh, we are asking, we are being asked kth largest element. So second largest is basically the second element from the left, right? Because we sorted in ascending order. So ideally, if we just return length of num numbers minus k, which is four here, right? Six elements minus Two is four. Oh, one, two, three, four. Fourth value is uh, value at the fourth index is five, which is what the question is asking for. This is all cool, and time complexity. If you do this, is basically of n log n. Best case, worst case uh, is n log n, and this works. Uh, but the problem is, it's n log n. There, uh, there is an algorithm called quick select. It's based on something called whole partition, which gives us an average case of O of n, but a worst case of one square, O of n square. So you can make some um, thing, basically, you know, some stuff to make it worst case O of n, you know, but it's still worst case of one O of n square. Uh, but the average O of n is appealing uh, depending on the kind of input you're getting. It's O of n is appealing. So let's look at this algorithm. This is a very famous and popular, famous or popular uh, interview question asking for kth largest element or kth smallest element in an array. So, so just take a step backward. This is a straightforward solution. Let's, let's say solution one is this and solution two is basically solution two this there is another solution which is like uh, decent time complexity you can use something like a heap or priority queue you know let's say use a priority queue And uh, when the length of men add all elements to the queue, when length reaches k, pop finally return the peak of the priority queue. So if you are aware of priority queue properties, what it does is uh, every time you add an element, it sorts the element in the queue. So like let's say you started with three and then you started with two, uh, like two is smaller than three. So it sorts the elements inside. So at each um, insertion, you basically, uh, it maintains the order, you know, it maintains the sorted order. So once you have or add all um, elements and also make sure that every time you reach k you basically pop off finally you will have n minus k you know um, n minus k elements in the priority queue you will just uh, return the top of the priority queue which basically gives us the answer which is k the largest element so for time complexity for this is you know each operation is of n log n and we do um, 
we do we, we do add all elements which is n log n right and it's it's very similar to what we um, get here which is sorry temp complexity this is for this all right so this is very similar since you add all elements you now some some people probably like if, if you can avoid adding all elements you can end up with k log n still little better than sorted order um, let's look at the quick select algorithm so the idea is um, pick a pivot so let's write the algorithm the algorithm works like this Sorry about that. Pick a pivot and then move all elements smaller than pivot to its left and move all elements to the man larger than pivot to its right so let's say you start with the same input let's say we start with same input what do i mean by pivot let's say pivot is you know you can pick the starting element zero so what we are going to do is let's say the starting index is start and and let's, say, let's start pivot so if start is zero and is five and minus one and let's say we start pivot zero so you move start until um, until the, it, it breaks basically if the start if the start uh, element is basically greater than the pivot so 3 is less than or equal to 3 was uh, since the pivot is like 0 3 is less than or equal to 3 works fine 2 is less than or equal to 3 works fine so every time this conditions get satisfied we are going to increase the start so we are at 2 1 is less than or equal to 3 works fine an increment and now start is 3 uh, the array of the element at the third index is 5 so when it happens then you break and similarly you start the end value at the last index let's say so you see if 4 is greater than 3 it is greater than 3 you start with you if it satisfies then you decrement the value so now element at 4 is greater than 3 yes it is greater than 3 so you ink you decrement again 3 element at 5 greater than 3 element at 3 which is which is 5 is greater than 3 yes so you decrement again so you break when start is greater than end so the algorithm is something like this if start is greater than and you basically break all right so th this is the condition all you're going to do is uh, always pick a pivot move all the elements less than the pivot to the left all the elements greater than pivot to the right and then return the pivot so the calling function could check if pivot matches with the value k if it matches actually pivot matches with the value n minus k n minus k because we are looking for the kth largest element so if it matches then we return it or we do something like binary search style indexing to see if we have to like move left or right let's start with the coding uh, i'll add comments as i code so you would have better understanding so i commented out all this stuff let's say let's make k is equal to length of numbers minus k 
buy this because because we want the largest eighth largest number once we have that um, let's call let's initialize two variables low and high with zero and length of numbers minus one so let's traverse all the elements i mean in a way that until low is less than or equal to high so we need a partition method partition method actually does this uh, thing where basically partition the array with all the elements less than pivot to the left and elements greater than right to right elements greater than pivot to the right so let's define a method called partition which takes numbers as the input and then takes two indexes start and end so let's assign pivot to the start I'm choosing start but you can choose any value uh, it's just convenient now once we have the start let's say for start less than or equal to end what we're going to do is have two loops which takes care of checking the start less than or equal to end and numbers of start has to be less than or equal to numbers of pivot right because we want all the elements lesser than pivot to the left so until this condition satisfies we increment the index because this condition is good now to a similar condition for start less than or equal to n and numbers of pivot should be lesser than or equal to numbers of n right until this condition gets satisfied you can do n minus minus right so now we came to a position where we have elements which doesn't satisfy the criteria we want that is basically on the left you have an element which is larger than the pivot on the right you have a smaller element than what is at pivot so let's check the bounds here if start is greater than end you break this loop otherwise if you are good then just swap the values swap numbers start end. all right so at the end what we are going to do is we swap numbers at uh, end and pivot and because this is where uh, the actual partition broke so we are going to assign the pivot value to the end and finally we are going to return the end which is the pivot let me assign a return integer parameter so now we have partition method you guys have must have seen the swap method we don't have the swap function we could do it in line but it's cleaner to just have a separate function takes an array and two indices and then just swaps nums of i nums of j equal to nums of j comma nums of i it's just one line all right now we have partition method what we're going to do is let's call something called our result now we can just let's define declare a variable called result result is equal to partition with at the start you call partition method with the start and end indexes which is low and high which we defined above so once you get the partitioned index check if the partition index is the value we want k right if it is then the, you could return names of result if it is not and result is greater than k so what does result is greater than k mean 
right if result is greater than k then um, it's it's at the left side right like k is on the left side of result so we put high equal to result minus y because we want to limit the search to the left side of the the array otherwise we make low is equal to plus one because if, it, if the only else condition is basically when result is less than k basically the partition index is less than k that means uh, the value we were we are looking for it is on the right side and finally return the value of the result right so we partition the array at every step check if the partition index matches with the value k and if it is then we return the value otherwise we are going to just return the index check if it works it ran it well we were expecting five and we got five let's submit see if it works all right it's got accepted 12 milliseconds so as you can see it only beat 68 percent of the solutions what you could do is instead of uh, as i said earlier in the video the worst case is off and square and some uh, situations where you don't have you, you have the array in certain way like when the elements are already sorted things like that you could shuffle the array uh, to decrease your worst case to to come closer to O of n and you could when i say shuffle basically shuffle the in given array and then do the same thing rest of the stuff so if you have any more questions please feel free to add a comment and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos of this sort thank you